Hi everyone, I'm Matt Gordon here at 1092 Studios in Nashville, Tennessee. Today we're here with Mike Ball, professional bass player, and we're going to talk about volume, tone, and instrument selection within the recording studio. So Mike, we've done a lot of work together here uh, in different recording scenarios. We've done some country stuff, we've done more of a blues thing, pop, rock. Um, since we're in Nashville, let's talk about country. So when we're in here doing country sessions, which guitar out of the three, I see you've got a P bass, J bass, and a fretless. Mm -hmm. Which one are you going to reach for most of the time? For country, primarily my P bass right here. Why wow. is that? Kind of just goes with the tradition of Nashville. Everybody plays a P bass, and you really can't go wrong with the P bass with the tone that it has. It's very, it's very simple, but it can be very complex too where it's just very round, it's very full, right. and it fills in such a dynamic in the recordings that you need that low end, low end warmth to it. So let's compare that to the J bass. Why would you shy away from the J bass in a country <clears throat> session? The jazz bass just doesn't really have the, that warmth to it. It's more of a mid-range instrument. It does still have some low end to it, and it does have punch, right. but it's just it's more of that, it's more punch, where you need it more just to fill out a, for a country session. Right, so compare that to the fretless. For the fretless, you actually heard a lot of fretless in 90s country. Little Texas, um, what might have been, was a very good example of that. I use it for, for a country session more for a ballad, trying to get the more roundness of an upright bass. Right. So usually with that and with this bass, I, I run the highs and mids very low and keep it very low endy for it and play up high on the neck so that you can get that, get that um, hollowness that an upright would give you. So is it fair to say that the fretless electric is just an electrified version of an upright bass? It is, um, but also at the same time you can get some of the same tones out of an upright bass from, let's say, like a hollow body Hofner or okay. an Epiphone, something like that too, where you get more of the more of the thud attack as opposed to more of the warmth and the roundness of it. Okay, very cool. So now that we're with the P bass here, um, if we're gonna do a you know rock, it it would work for rock, country, pop, country, mm -hmm. the old Johnny Cash. <laughs> It covers a wide range, covers all of that? Absolutely, yeah. A lot of guys, even nowadays, <clears throat> they record P bass, they'll tune it down a full step. So you go D, G, C, F tuning. Right. Some guys even go down a full step plus the half step. Is that just to give you a little bit more low end? A little it bit gives, more warmth and richness? It gives you a little bit more warmth and richness and it also gives you a little bit more aggressiveness too. I know some guys, um, like with Eric Church, right? His bass player Lee Hendricks, he does that, and uh, Jimmy Lee Slos does that as well for Keith Urban. Oh, very cool. Yeah, so he tunes down a full step, and you can hear that on like um, actually it would be a he tunes down a full minor third for the tune uh, "Told You So," where you can really hear that low end and that growl from a oh, key awesome. bass. Oh, awesome! Awesome. So let's talk about the control knobs that you've got on the actual guitar here. So okay. tell me about you know, do you have the volume on your actual guitar turned up all the way so that you're feeding a full signal to your pedal board? Um, where do you like to fiddle around with your tone knobs? Tell me about that. Usually I run pegged, dimed it, you know, volume wide open. That way the board gets the maximum level. It's a consistent level over all the tracks. You're not really, you know, it makes it easier on the control room for that. Right. As far as tone, it kind of dictates towards what the track calls for. Um, P basses are known to be pretty, I don't want to say tacky in the in the tone, but you can definitely hear the punch, a different kind of punch from a jazz bass. Right. So I tend to, usually about 50 to 3 quarters, I keep the tone level open for country trance. Um, compare that to the jazz bass with the two pickup setup, you can definitely get more of an array of sounds. Right. You know, it's... It's a l little bit more than this, not quite like what an active five string would have or anything like that. Though. So, will you be able to play a little bit for us with the tone setting you've got here, and then we'll just move the tone around just so our listeners can and viewers can understand the differences in the tone? Absolutely. So this is with the volume completely wide open on the P bass with the tone completely off. You definitely get more of the 
the classic country sound of anything where it's just it's more low end. There's not yeah. so much definition of it. Right, and so then in this particular scenario, you would leave the definition to get that to get it to punch out in the mix. You would leave that to someone like me, an engineer, mm -hmm. to you know EQ it or put a little bit of distortion on it. Absolutely, because you're not really getting that out of this tone. Exactly. Right now. Yeah. Just for the, something like this, it's very basic. It's very easy to manipulate post production. Right. Okay. So let's uh, uh, right about here be about halfway. Like you get more of. You can even consider it more of a Motown sound too. Yeah, it's starting to, to punch out a little bit more. Exactly. You know. It, it gives you a little bit more more uh, color to it. Yeah, okay. So let's let's hear the tone wide open. And this is a wide open where you No problem with that sticking out of the mix. Then. Right, exactly. You can really tell where it is, and even with the direct line, it might even be too much. Right. So that that would lend well to something like a Motown, where you got that funky exactly. uh, sound. But yep. in a country situation, you're right. It just would not would not work. Yeah, it's not. It's. I will say though, it might not work, but it's also easy to take some of that attack out as opposed to adding it in later. That, very good point. Very good point. So. Like you said, you have it um, about halfway. Usually, for most sessions, I run about halfway to three quarters. That Very way, cool. you still get you still get the attack, you get the punch, but you can still feel the warmness of the bass too. Okay. So. Very cool. Um, now, when you're on a session, uh, let's take country again. Are mm -hmm. you using your fingers? Are you using a pick? When do you when do you grab a pick? When do you? More often than not, I use fingers for pick. It would. I would say more for like some of the like the punk rock punk rock stuff and even in the country vein more like the outlaw country stuff of the late 70s with you know like um like the conway twitty style uh, don williams stuff like that thanks everyone for watching please be sure to check out 1092 studios on the web and follow us on social media also while you're at it make sure you check out mike ball bass on instagram so you can follow what he's been doing in the studio and on the road also, if you're interested, please watch more of our tutorial videos here on YouTube. And until next time, take care.